Yeah. Um, what was the other thing that okay, was, was This nice? is going to be interesting. Hello and welcome to the Jerry and Scarlet show with my wife Scarlet and my husband Jerry McLaughlin and my firstborn, our yeah. firstborn, <laughs> Eric yeah. Rocco McLaughlin. Okay, so uh, on the show this week, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, The Diplomat on Netflix. The Diplomat. We are oh. also looking at Tour de France Unchained, also on Netflix. Also on Netflix. And of course, famously... It's I mean, Spider-Man uh, across the Spider-Verse, yeah, which is in fun. cinemas now. And this little one experienced with us just, was it yesterday? God, the days are rolling into one already. It's only yeah. just the start of the summer holidays. Send help. Yeah, um, yeah. Start, of the, start of the summer holidays. We might have a bit of a break uh, for the series of the summer. We're going to try it and we're going to try yes. having Rock on the show. Rock, thanks for joining us on the show. Yeah. Oh, good. Good okay. point. Yeah. Right, okay, so we all went to the cinema to watch uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That is correct. That is correct, isn't it? And uh, what did you think of it, Rocco? They were going to put the picture was, up there. It was a little bit awesome. A little bit awesome? That's yeah, a great story. it was a lot awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, I like, I, but I'll tell you the most bit. Uh-huh. The ghost spider bit was a little bit awesome. The ghost spider? Oh, she's Gwen. Uh, Gwen. She's called something different in this. Gwen, so in she's Spidey. Spidey's drums. Yeah, okay. in Spidey, she's called Ghost Spider. But in this one, she is called something different. Um, um, but it's the same character as Gwen. Um, I think we have a weirdo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. So just uh, FYI for anyone listening on Spotify or, or just the audio version, we've also got our second born son, Reddix, uh, who, who is hanging around the back. But and who he, we didn't invite into this because he slept through the entire film. Yeah. Nothing to do with the actual yeah. film he just happened Freddy, to fall asleep five minutes in oh, because he was shattered so um yeah so let's give you a quick synopsis of the film after reuniting with gwen stacy brooklyn's full-time friendly neighborhood spider-man is catapulted across the multiverse where he encounters a team of spider people charged with protecting its very existence I however know. When the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles finds himself pitted against the other spiders. He must soon redefine what it means to be a hero so that he can save the people he loves the most. Who's the person he's trying to save, Rocco? Can you remember? His... His dad. Yeah. His dad is a police officer and he works for a city. And that's absolutely right. And yeah. Gwen's dad is also a cop as well. That's also right. Yeah, that doesn't give anything away. That's very yeah. obvious. I've also just realised that I've taken the trailer from the original film, which came out in 2018. Oh, whoopsie uh, <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse. This is a cross. anything. Yeah, this, this is across the Spider-Verse. Um, so this is actually part one of part two of two parts. Uh, which I didn't realise going in. Okay, but it is the second film. We uh, we maybe should have planned you get, no, <laughs> to get the film. No, 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 no. This, this, this is again. the first. This is well because it says said to be continued at the end. Yeah, this no, I, I, yeah, part, but it is the second parts film. Of this story. Yes. Yes. Second film. Uh huh. But there is another doing? part still to go. So. This is going to be ver- a very interesting <laughs> oh, episode, everyone. Uh, okay, so Rocco, first of all, what was your what was your favourite part? Did you really enjoy the film? I think I did. Did you? Yeah, okay. but I t- the, the guy with the cool helmet with the vampire teeth was absolutely scary. Yeah, there was a lot of different Spider-Men in this, wasn't there? So obviously it's about the Spider-Verse, which I love about this. Yeah, but the T-Rex one was absolutely oh, t- nipped. Yeah, there was a T-Rex Spider-Man in it as well. Yeah. So what I love about this particular, it's, it's very, very super, super, super meta, isn't it? There's yes. There's so much going on, different universes. To be honest with you, it is a it's quite a sensory explosion i mean it looks amazing uh-huh. it's very colorful and it includes all this kind of universe time hopping which you've seen so much sci-fi especially in the thank you for fixing my headphone there Rocco. you see in a lot of marvel universe stuff now it's all about jumping yeah uh, these kind of realms and stuff and it can get well, this... quite overwhelming but i think in this film it's done incredibly well yeah and the super villain the new super villain for this one is called the spot and he's actually the embodiment of what Jerry was just saying there, and this sort of jumping from multiverse to multiverse. Sorry, the spot, that okay, calm down. Okay, the spot is um, voiced by Jason Schwartzman. Uh, he's hapless and funny, and yet another really cool design feature of this film, um, and lends itself to a lot of jokes, doesn't it? The spot's design. Do you remember the spot? He's the one who he says, "Oh, are you a Dalmatian?" Yes, and then and also. When he was dripping, that was actually not funny. But when he turned black, that was absolutely scary. Oh, and was the, it? And the spider with the mohawk was absolutely thin. Yeah, oh, he was. Right. Is that punk spider? Spider punk? Yeah. No, yeah. no, he's rock spider. No, he's spider punk. 
Um, yeah, but it's the same guy. Yeah, and that was a, he's a really cool design as well, isn't it? I think he might have been my favourite Spider Punk. He was the British. Well, they're calling him the British one. He's the English one. Um, and uh, yeah, very yeah, some awesome design. I, honestly, I can't overstate how cool the design work is on this film. Um, I think, I think they had the most contributor here then Rocky, ever. Yeah, anything more to add to it then? What was your your, your favourite bit? Do you enjoy the colours as well? Because it's really bright and colourful, isn't it? The whole way through. That's absolutely good. I, I oh, do you see this girl who can like has technology uh -huh. who can and also she uh, she looked like Vexa who was in Teen Titans. Oh. He was a boy and then he was hit. Yeah. By a mediator. Okay. Is Remember that in Teen Titans rather than yes. the Spider Verse? Okay. He got yeah. hit in the broad. Okay, wow, well, thank you. There you go. There's a so, crossover from the metaverse as well. If you were to give it a rating, Rocco, out of five, five being the best and one being the worst, what would you give it? I'll give it five. Five? Oh, okay. That's a fantastic. No, no, like 500. 500? Oh, right. wow. wow. 500 okay. out of five. I think that's our best rating ever. Um, big fan of that. Okay, right, you shoot off, honey. Thank you, son. You that go grab really your good. over there. Well, well, I'll just... I'll just... ready? That's how we catapult, catapult all of our guests out of action. Uh, right. Oh, I forgot to move Go. Okay, that was an interesting experiment. Sorry. We might not do that again. That was good. Sorry, okay, well, maybe that. if you do enjoy it, maybe we'll just keep... Um, it's a good way of utilising our children and yeah. getting some um, value out of them rather yeah. than taking a slice out of us. So, in short, yes. um, yeah, I felt that the actual story was a little bit lacking, but that it was such an incredible ride that it didn't matter. <laughs> all, all joking aside, I actually think it might well be like a total masterpiece. I yeah. think like it was, it's so well put together. Like the, the, the fact that they're able to use so much, so many different types of animation, mm -hmm. they're pulling together all these different... Um, uh, types of Spider-Man things that we've mm -hmm. seen over the years, all these different imaginations of it, and they're all you know tapped into in this one film. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely beautiful. The voice performances in it are amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of um, um, there's a lot of AI uh, animation in it, which is also yeah, like incredible. That. Yeah, I couldn't find that when I yeah. So yeah, no, that. it's a, apparently something they've done with it as well, just to kind of like because there's so much going on. You wonder how they managed to get all that done. So many different styles of animation, and I, I think these kind of meta storylines can be really confusing and you do have to have your head screwed on yeah you can't miss it. a minute but it's it but it's fantastic the way it jumps and it's just so so yeah. so gripping the whole way through and the sound design i mean we watched it in the cinema didn't we and yeah i'm glad we did that uh -huh. yeah because i don't i think amazing. you would miss something if you just watch that at home yeah. on a little tv um but if you if you are watching it at home put on your sound system crank it right up the yeah the the actual sound design is incredible as well um but yeah just overall an incredible design i think they had over a thousand animators working on it wow. i think i read somewhere yeah, which makes exactly. sense because it is absolutely non-stop it's incredible um the amount that they managed to i can't imagine for some people it might feel like a bit of a sensory overload I, actually, for me it did working. to be yeah, perfectly honest yeah. yeah but also because there was a lot of jokes i felt like i was missing a little bit of as well because of there's a lot of comic book jokes there's a lot of yeah. prior peter parker jokes um there's a lot there's so much in the spider verse there's so much in the, the house if you can hear the doors yeah, yeah the, the, the doors are slamming yeah. um like the spider verse it is yeah so complex that um, um this year for you know mom yeah. you have any more notes on spider-man that's, that's not even letting me have the ipod no what i gave you that's your one here okay seriously yeah. i hate go. that one okay go well, yeah we might have to take a break for the summer <laughs> for this show <laughs> yeah oh, like, yeah, well, Scarlett, you hold down the show and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll okay, crack good. on here with this. So, we are moving on after the Spider-Verse to Tour de France Unchained, uh, which is also on Netflix. So, the synopsis of that... Um, following cycling teams as they compete in the 109th edition of the gruelling month-long bike race, starting in Copenhagen in Denmark and ending with the final stage on the Champs-Élysées Paris in France. Um, it's made by the makers of F1's Drive to Survive, and which is obviously a, was, is a mega successful series. And um, so they know what they're doing and it's clearly obvious right from the start the first episode of this is absolutely gripping and the rest of it does not disappoint we are not cycling fans i think it's fair to say is there any podcast like this in the whole world? <laughs> I can't imagine. um yeah oh. so we're, i was just saying there that we're not big cycling fans but i actually don't think that you need yeah. to be to careful to... careful what you say about the cyclists because it's known online that they'll absolutely go yeah, for you yeah they're they're a, if you're a cyclist an and you're saying this group. now and you and you angrily disagree 
please let us know yeah well yeah okay yeah yeah start start a fight in our comments section that's where all the action happens um yeah so you, you put us on to this you were watching it while you were in london weren't you yes. you said like check this out it's like the f1 which we've really taken to mm -hmm. and uh, you're right i really yeah. really kind of got into the strategy of it and it is politics yeah really it's really brutal it's fast it's gripping it mm -hmm. I mean, it's terrifying at points i they, appreciated how dangerous yeah the sport. I mean, well this is it was, the but... danger is kind of key let's be honest yeah. isn't yeah. it um the the danger i hadn't realized like i knew that i, I remember Chris Hoy is obviously a famous Scotsman involved mm -hmm. in the old cycling and I remember him talking in an interview about certain um, uh, sores that you can get from cycling and by that he meant that his leotard and probably a better word for it um, is basically <laughs> really it's so slim <laughs> that it's, it gets embedded in the structure of your skin at right certain point. Horrible skin. horrible injuries. Mm. Um, so I did sort of know roughly that the injuries could be really horrendous but I don't think I'd quite clocked the length of some of these races the sheer terror, the falls the, what, you know, to chuck in a little bit. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm absolutely gripped by it. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, well, I've only watched the first two episodes mm -hmm. so far because you, you put us yeah. onto it and straight away you, you're absolutely right. I think like the kind of strategy element of it, the danger mm -hmm. of it, the way it tells the characters, it's a quite a well-worn uh, format that Netflix mm -hmm. has got now yeah. with um, the F1 and now they're doing it with Tour de France. Um, I think there's but, a surfing one as well, which is supposed to be... Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. Do you know, huh. there's something else I'll, I'll need to check out, but like, look, I, I, it's given me a whole new appreciation for F1 and this has certainly given me a whole new... Pre Will it mean that I'll watch the Tour de France with, a, with certainly with a new appreciation? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to see oh, if I am kind of yeah. like, we need these storylines in, in this we actually have time. got the cycling coming past our doorstep mm -hmm. in early August as well Scotland has the I want to say the Euros which may be wrong but something <laughs> along <laughs> those like, lines uh, um, yeah up, that's so. coming yeah. Uh, yeah that's coming past our doorstep so we'll be looking forward to that so we might know a little bit more about it there might yeah. be some famous faces who knows well when the Commonwealth Games were, we were talking about this the other day when the Commonwealth mm -hmm. Games was on and I remember there's a there's a big hill uh, over from like Hillhead and Glasgow down towards Byers Road uh, and it's right by the Marks and Spencers there mm -hmm. and Byers Road and it's a really steep hill and, and we would walk back yeah, on that wouldn't there's we? sleeping policemen on it there's all sorts oh, of traffic bumpy, cameras it's steep. really steep yeah and I remember seeing the, the guys at the Glasgow um at the Commonwealth Games, mm -hmm. and there was like one particular guy, and he was so good at like the, the um, uphill part that mm -hmm. he accelerated past me <laughs> at that bit, and I had a whole new appreciation of what these athletes uh, do. Uh, but to see I just this, had a funny memory of you, like so when I was pregnant, we uh, we lived up that hill. And I have a funny memory of you and me struggling to get up that hill whilst <laughs> pregnant and Jerry literally pushing me from one buttocks behind, literally one hand on each butt, shoving me up the hill. <laughs> we and I was like, couldn't even get to the top of it. And these people are overtaking on that hill to gain advantage. Yeah, yeah. So we so, so to connect that to Tour de France, it's like pushing a pregnant lady up a hill. Mm -hmm. It's uh, hard work, but worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, well, I really like yeah. What, would you, what would your rating be then for, uh, for that? I would give that a 4.5 five out of five the only point five missing off being because i wanted a little bit more of the tactical knowledge around the yellow shirt the yellow jersey right um, and the peloton because there is a lot of they are they are explaining quite a bit as they go and mm. maybe they just don't want to enter uh, overwhelm us yeah but i i wanted a little bit more strategy because there's a few things that i'm like why yeah is why he slingshotting and not he slingshotting and, and you know there's yeah Maybe so, it'll get round but, to that. Yeah. But it's brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Watch. I would agree four and a four and a half mm -hmm. uh, for me as well. Yeah. Okay, on to the diplomat. The diplomat. A drama, uh, darling. A drama. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, this is another one. You've watched more of this than me. I've only mm -hmm. watched the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the diplomat is, uh, I'll give you a yeah. wee quick synopsis. Amid mm -hmm. an international crisis, a career diplomat juggles her new high profile job as ambassador to the UK and her turbulent marriage to a political star. Oh, you've got different synopsis. Oh, okay, well, you give us, you give, give us your one. Well, uh, yeah, so mine says the series centres on Kate Wyler, mm -hmm. who is played by Kerry Russell, mm -hmm. the new United States ambassador to the United Kingdom, as she has to defuse international crises, forge strategic alliances in London, and adjust to her new place in the spotlight, whilst also trying to save, survive her marriage to fellow career diplomat Hal Wyler. It's really interesting. Yeah, we really, we've synopsied the hell. Out of yeah, that. we have. Um, that's a really interesting tell. That last line: "Survive her marriage to fellow career diplomat Hal Weiler." Um, that is really a big part of the story. So, yeah, so that's the that's um, the key 
part of it, isn't he? He's yeah. this diplomat superstar, and he's now taking a you know a side role. He is the the husband mm-hmm. of, and this this is now her time to shine. Well, that's what's shown initially. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. it's um yeah, the, and it's first firstly the two top cast members, Kerry Russell and Rufus Sewell, are incredible. Like, we've Ruf, Rufus Sewell has been a sort of stalwart of British TV forever. Mm-hmm. Um, Kerry Russell was fairly new to us. Like she's done the she's done a lot of TV in America. Don't get me well, wrong. We had watched um, the Americans, have we? Which yeah, people loved her breakout. Really it, yeah, yeah, her breakout scary. role. Well, she was also in uh, Cocaine Bear, so we have seen her recently. But she is absolutely brilliant in this. Yeah. Um, and they've done they've done a really good job of weaving real life. I was going to say catastrophes, but some people would disagree, such as Brexit and Trump presidency, um, into the story without actually detracting mm-hmm. from uh, anything and without actually really taking the mickey at all. They're just weaving it in as political things that are currently ongoing mm-hmm. within this um, presidential... Um, so it's a fictitious world, but you do have some real-life references yeah. and stuff like that. For me, that is actually the problem I've got with it. Oh, like, right, okay. So... I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to be taking it on. Is it like a little bit of real worldy, or is it like an imagination? Is it like, are the you know you watch some things like in Twenty Four and they're having a, the terrorists are from some made up country. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it really is about the action. And I think that is the kind of style of this. It is kind of a Twenty Four. Is a kind of hyper hyper realized version of the real world. But you're yeah. right. Then it goes into a bit of real worldy stuff. And I found and the it's, relationship. And it's sort of sexy the, American style yeah, as well. Country, but you it's know, also a bit like, kind of like smell my armpits. It's also a bit kind yeah, of but she's still raw. taking her top off in a very sexy bra yeah. while she's saying smell my armpits, which is super American. Cast are brilliant. That's the what attracted yeah. me to it was the cast. Like when I saw uh-huh. like the, the actors that were in it, because Rory Kinnear's in it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Is it Michael? Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Uh, Who did you play? Um, oh gosh, the president, the president. The oh, president. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um, from Better Call Saul. Uh, Saul's brother. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh god, it's gone, it's gone. Right, anyway, um, yeah, I think them. yeah, there. This is a bit of a mashup, I would say, of the West Wing, of Homeland, and of Twenty Four. Put all those three together, and this is what comes out of the AI generator. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Um, so it's it's sexy, it's a thriller. Um, there's great drama and quite a lot of political, quite a lot of black comedy coming out of some very serious situations. Michael. McKean. Michael- of course. Um, brilliant. Yeah. He is brilliant. Um, but yeah, the fight scene between Kate and her husband Hal, like the actual fight scene is a particular highlight. Um, and I think, yeah, I really liked the sort of light comedy. They weren't they aren't really pushing for comedy, but there's a lot of um yeah, like funny things that kind of happen and yeah, I think they do a really good job. Um yeah, I, I think I, I need to give it a few more episodes, but yeah. it, it wasn't sucking me in, in the same way because I kind of felt like some of the things that were going on seemed to be a bit i'm like would that really happen i don't understand why they're allowing this husband to do this to interfere to the level he is i know that there's mm-hmm. a key yeah. reason why that I, I do i do get that i really enjoyed the performance the way it looks is super slick there's mm-hmm. great action in it as well mm-hmm. you really have to have your brain switched on for it though don't oh yeah you? Exactly yeah yeah you enough. can't this isn't a go and there's make a, a cup of tea happening. and come back yeah, yeah. you'll know what's going on it's a lot happening and it's um yeah it's intense drama but uh, i think it's worth it and i think yeah if you like 24 if you like homeland uh then you will like this i think this is right up your street cool. um and i liked all of those things so let's go for our, your ratings on that then what would you um what's your kind of thoughts here i am giving it uh 4.5 yeah what's that noise it's Gosh, the what? children is that the children yes, right, okay we're gonna have to wrap up yeah. this episode because it's the <laughs> summer holidays and they're absolutely yes. killing us i'm gonna give it um three actually but okay, i'm, I'm, but I'm open to that change and i really am and yeah. i'm gonna give it some i think i think it will change um yeah. it is yeah. yeah it's really cool so yeah so we are gonna take a short break for the uh school holidays because this is quite a lot to take <laughs> and also the house <laughs> will be an, an absolute experiment. death trap for the next eight weeks <laughs> um so yeah so thank you for bearing with us and um we'll probably do some little updates um um, on socials and keep you entertained over there so do follow us if you don't on the socials um the jerry and jerry and scarlet show what was my own yeah. name there um maybe we could do some rocker reviews as well if you like yeah. rocker reviews because he enjoys it yeah so, we'll see yeah we'll see rocker <laughs> we'll reviews see. might be that actually let's cancel this show and just do <laughs> yeah, rocker yeah, reviews, yeah. we'll see how pg he can make it um and uh, yeah we'll we'll see you at the end of the summer holidays have a wonderful summer and we'll catch you then keep us in your prayers bye, bye.